Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Matthew Mess here. I'm joined by Crispy Teabag, and welcome to episode one of the Onboard of the Apollo podcast. So, today, what are we going to be talking about today, Crispy? Well, if you had the bloody document up, maybe you'd know, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a second. Let me just bring it up. Uh, where are we? Um, good thing. Good so thing I'm not recording the. This is a 100 percent audio podcast, so I'm not doing video for this. Just be- yeah. yeah, just because I, you know, you lazy shit. No, I mean I, I'd rather do an audio only podcast once in a while instead of the video stuff I do with Mark all the time. You know, um, so let's just bring up. Yeah. So basically, this is just a podcast about space, um, you know, talking about stars, black holes, planets, aliens, all that fun stuff. Andrew. Banjo. We know you're listening. We know you're listening, Banjo. We're watching you. We know, we know what you're up to. Um, you can't hide anything from us. Okay, so today we're going to be um, just talking about basically how Earth was created and the solar system. Uh, we're going to also touch on Earth-like planets that have been recently discovered, and we we'll actually might even touch on the Fermi paradox. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically what if we'll we be... don't touch on that too much. We'll do that next episode. Yeah, but... basically. Um, so anyway, uh, basically, okay. So what we un- what we understand what I from my understanding, um, basically, Earth... Earth was created by God. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I like how we just—I like how we just made this really uncomfortable from the get-go. Um, so, all right. So, <coughs> basically, from from, <coughs> so what they what science tells us anyway, <laughs> um, is that Earth was just it, is just a whole bunch of like planetoids and whatnot that just mud ball. Uh, yeah. The, the early solar system was extremely volatile. Um, the sun was really young, it was still kind of like a disc of hot gas, and there was a lot of rocks flying around smashing into each other, and some of those rocks eventually um, coalesced into a little planetoid, which would be floating around in orbit around the baby sun for a very long time, before eventually getting its own atmosphere and, and volcanic activity, boom, you got land. Oh, look, there's gas in the atmosphere. Oh, we've got water. Yep, and then we've got life. Mm-hmm. And then evolution began. Bam, bam, bam. And there we go. And we the got dinosaurs. The dinosaurs, yeah, <laughs> all that fun stuff. Um, Jurassic period, the Triassic <laughs> period. Boom. USSR. Mass extinction event happened. Like a huge, um, I think it was an asteroid We're currently hit the going planet. under that now, aren't we? We're I'm really fast-forwarding the timeline here, basically. <laughs> 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 yeah, soon we're going to be talking about the USSR and the Cold War. And <laughs> oh, yeah, it would be like that um, video by that guy, whatever his name is, that did, like, the Earth's history in, like, ten minutes or something, I don't know. But uh, it's, it's pretty <clears throat> funny. He's like, boom, civilization, boom, weather update, weather update, <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, I could have done something like that. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, you know, I, I it's interesting because... How how are we as a species are able to actually comprehend that this is what happened is pretty amazing, but it's also mm-hmm. it, it was Maybe also it was also going to happen because we have all the evidence on the planet here to tell us exactly mm-hmm. what happened. So you know it makes sense. Um, I watched a, I watched a video about what if humans didn't exist anymore or suddenly disappeared, and what would happen is that. Well, it would actually take 7.2 million years for Mount Rushmore to completely dissolve. 7.2 million years. <clears throat> Which is insane. Um, but things like oil plants, it would take a couple of hours without human management for them to just start a fire. Yeah. And just a few hours. And, you know, pavements and buildings would fall down because all of these hogweeds would come up over London and all of this stuff. So, yeah, Earth is a very, very interesting, but pretty disgusting place. Yeah, especially now. Um, we're, human beings have really uh, regressed socially as of late, but, yeah. you know, the technology is getting better. Eventually, we're going to be able to make our lives a lot easier than they already are right now um, when we discover yeah. more powerful computers and actually be able to um, transcend time and space and, like, travel to where we want to go wherever we want to go and inhabit other planets and all that fun stuff um so basically 
when it comes to a planet like Earth, Earth is kind of like the perfect planet. And there's not s- there's not so many planets that really fall in this category. And this is where okay, so so what I'm what I'm trying to say is Earth is like in the um Goldilocks area of the sun. So it, the perfect area. Just, any 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 further away would freeze to death. Any closer would freaking catch on fire. So we're like the perfect oh, yes. amount of distance away from the sun. Like it's it's really even, even Mars <laughs> is getting better. Like they're sending up people to Mars. Mm. So that's pretty scary. But it'll take them a year to get there. How long are they going to stay on there for? And another year to get back. Yeah. So basically, the Kep- what the Kepler um, scientists have been doing is been trying to locate more Earth analogs or Earth-like planets. Um, there is um, a-, a hypothesis which is called the rare Earth hypothesis that suggests that planets like ours are like really rare. So the thousands of um, yeah, they're not common. No, there could be literally just a couple of hundred in this entire universe, <clears throat> which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, so, well, the universe itself is pretty big, though. It's a lot bigger than what we can see because light, uh, the expansion expanded faster than light. It's so fast. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so basically, <clears throat> um, if we do the math, we've got, we, this is the only, we, we know of other Earth-like planets that have water, but they either have, like, double the mass of Earth or, like, they're really huge, so the gravity would be ridiculous. Like, you wouldn't be able to walk on it. Like, it'd just be too much. Like, your whole body would get crushed. It would be ridiculous. Um, so but, they're not Earth-like planets? No, but, the, the, well, they have water. They just have more gravity. That's the thing. So Gravity! The Earth analog is, you know, there has to be water on the planet and it has to be oxygen. Or at least water, because water has oxygen in it. So, mm. yeah. Um, you know, there's always terraforming. I mean, p- people have been talking about, you know, terraforming Mars, for example, just getting a giant machine that can pump gas in the atmosphere and, you know, create an ozone layer, create oxygen so you can actually breathe it. Um, but that sort of technology is really ext- extremely difficult to create because... Um, you know, the technology needed to generate gas and oxygen in such a huge amount, you'd need some sort of nuclear powered, um, engine or something like that and fission, nuclear fission and whatnot. So that's a whole new can of worms altogether. But like I said, technology is getting better. You know, it's only a matter of time before computers can program something so ridiculous really quickly and easily. So, you know. Definitely. That's, this is, um... It's quite scary, almost. Yeah, just creating... <coughs> just just playing God like that. Yeah, it is rather terrifying, but mm. it's something we're probably going to have to do eventually because this planet is doomed. Like, it's, the, the, it, the, it's literally dying. So, you know, it's... The, the, we have to do Not something in our quickly. Lifetime, but oh, no. Not in our lifetime, but... Well, hopefully not, but I mean... It's terrifying that... You know, it could be a couple of hundred years, could be a couple hundred, could be a couple of thousand years, could be a couple hundreds of thousand years. I mean, if cybernetics years. take off the way they've been going right now, I don't think any of us will be dead. Um, we will probably be robots, and we will live forever. No. That's that's the theory. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just imitating a robot there. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so I've got a list of um, planets here that were categorized under the Earth analog um, uh, description. Uh, Kepler 69C, um, it was originally thought to be a (laughs) circumstance. I like how you point out the name Kepler and not the 69. (laughs) Exactly, it's the whole point. So it was originally thought to be a circumstellar habitable, to be in the circumstellar habitable zone which is basically what i was talking about earlier the goldilocks zone um and now they think it's too hot they believe it's too hot um there there is there is far away is it from us um it is about roughly uh it is uh quite a few light years away it is about 2430 light years (laughs) from earth 
that that is about 746 parsecs. So that's an extremely large amount of um, distance to travel. Distance. Even if you had a light speed engine, it would take you two thousand years to fucking get there. It's ridiculous, but um, nice. you know, I I I do think it's possible to go there. And not it may in a very once rocket ships once we figure out quantum physics and whatnot, we should be golden. Anyway, so we've got Kepler nine D, which is about one point five Earth masses, and it's one point six four Earth radius. It's extremely hot. Decent. It is very hot. It is not habitable, I believe. Um, Korot 7b, which is about 1... Uh, uh, 0.9 Earth masses. Actually, I think it's 9 Earth masses. It's extremely hot. Kepler 20f, um, slightly larger and likely more massive. Far too hot to be Earth-like. Yeah, basically there is a lot of um, other planets in the Kepler system that are too hot. Um, okay, so there, there is a... Um, Kepler 186F. Um, it is located. Is it it's a lot closer. Kepler 186F is only 582 light years away. Um, only. <laughs> well, you know, that's not very that far. I mean, if you got a light speed engine, mm -hmm. a warp drive, you could get there in like under 100 years um, if you could travel mm -hmm. fast enough. This planet, <coughs> it has a radius similar to Earth's. Is in a habitable zone, um, mm. and it it was detected using a transit mes method, basically, along with four additional planets orbiting much closer to the star. They were all detected that way, I believe. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it's it's a rather interesting planet because you know. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's its host star is um, Kepler one eighty six. It's an M type star, which is has a total of five planets. So, M type stars are not really as big as the sun, I believe. Um, mm. it, it it's only about three thousand Kelvin, and it's about four four billion years old, about hundred hundred six hundred million million years younger than the sun, which is interesting. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's nice to know that these planets exist in these, um, interesting systems because we definitely have options. We have Can I options. Talk about one that's really yeah, sure. Go for it. Go for it. Proxima Centauri B. It's an exoplanet. Yeah. It's an exoplanet. It was discovered in 2016. Mm. The temperature, the temperature is minus 39 degrees. So it's pretty cold. But, oh. you know, humans can live through that. And it's got land on it. And it's got water. Wow. So, that's pretty mad. It's, yeah. Um, it's 12 light years away. And if you... um, They're talking about sending these little ships over that go half the speed of light. And it will... um, It will only take them... I, I, they said it would only take them like eight years to get there because it's only four light years away. It would take them eight years to get there and mm. take more photos of it. Yeah. Eight years. Eight years. And they're launching these off in 2035. Hmm. So look at this because this is... This would be amazing if we could go and live on this thing and see this thing. Yeah. Um, because it's not far away. I mean, if I went on the ship and I lived on there for eight years, going at that speed, and I got there within eight years, and I came back within eight years, I'd still be alive. Mm. And I would have contributed to going to Proxima Centauri B, which is... It's fantastic. Yes, yeah, uh, um, 24 trillion miles, that's four light years. That's a long way. Um, But it's definitely doable. I mean, even with the current um ideas they have for spaceships it's possible to get to the star in about 20 years um or even the less Daily star which i wouldn't trust but the the star is saying that it could be home to eight foot aliens eight feet tall aliens um i don't know about that <laughs> but i don't know about that either have you have we discussed kepler 442b um it looks very earth like Kepler four two two B, um, the dash. Yeah, it's the um, 
it's it, it is also known as Koi seven four seven two some weird num name, but it's actually a rocky planet in the habitable zone of a K-type main sequence star Kepler forty four two. It's about one thousand two hundred light years away from Earth in the constellation Lyra. It's interesting. Um, That's far away. All of these, are, we're not going to reach them. In it is basically time. Kepler four four hundred and forty two b is basically a super Earth. It's like just a, a big Earth. Um, mm, pretty much. But it's 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 not impossible to survive on. No, it's definitely doable. Um, At some points. I mean, if if this planet had oxygen and nitrogen and whatnot in an atmosphere that was breathable, so that we would we could survive. Um, It'd I be believe it, I believe it's definitely livable. Yeah. yeah, that would be very yeah. interesting, actually. Personally, it would actually be surreal. Imagine w rolling out of bed, then you open the door, and outside it's like an alien planet. That would just be a massive head trip. <laughs> it would be, you would get almost a PTSD from that. <laughs> I, it would That's be, cool it would possible. be, it would be quite terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. Looking outside and seeing and not and not seeing the sun that you used to seeing or seeing the moon. Like, it would just be pitch black, or whatever. Or there'd be, like, two suns in the sky, for or, or whatever. It'd be yeah. crazy. That, that would be a surreal life experience. That yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've if you seen Star Wars on Tatooine, where there's those two suns, um, mm. you know, it's easy for that to become a normal thing when we're, when if the temperatures are just right. Um, it doesn't mm. matter what's in the sky, as long as you, you can stay alive on the planet. <laughs> So how much do you think it's going to develop? How far do you think we'll get by the end of our lifetimes in about? I, uh, I really like to hope. I really like to think that um quantum computing and rocket propulsion will definitely advance dramatically in the next forty years. I can see that happening. Um, mm -hmm. basically, uh, humans. The 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 line between um flesh and metal will definitely um skew. Um, more mm -hmm. people will want to be roboticized or whatever, and so they they can travel on the space missions and and you yeah, know yeah. be able to survive in conditions that would normally kill them, which is probably what we're going to have to end up doing because if if we get the technology to travel to these planets, I I can't see ourselves surviving as flesh and bone creatures. Um, even if it is livable, like we were just talking about, um, I believe we're going to have to go to... Brain over we will need to settle for something. We need to settle on a really hot planet or a really <clears throat> cold planet. It just has to happen. Because I don't think our rockets will have enough energy to be able to propel us to these ridiculous distance. We'll just have to settle on a planet that's really close, um, that is relatively, you know, good. Um, but... <laughs> Saturn, it doesn't even, I don't even think it even has a solid surface, neither does Jupiter. Well, it does have a rocky yeah. core, like it just has a little core in the middle, that's about it. Um, yeah, which is probably really bloody hot. It, and you would just be crushed to a pulp as well, because the gravity is like so ridiculous. It would literally be almost mm. like being pulled into a black hole, that's how much gravity I'm talking about. Like you would just get crushed. Right. <laughs> yeah, anyway, discuss... <laughs> Let's discuss the funny paradox. Now, I don't know much about this, but Matt does, so if you want to give an explanation. All right, so this kind of um, scales off to uh, what we were just discussing. The, the first, okay, so this is a, these are the, the, the dot points that kind of summarize what this is about. Um, there are billions of stars in the galaxy that are similar to the sun, and many of these stars are billions of years older than the solar system. With high probability, some of these stars have Earth-like planets, and if the Earth is typical... Some may have already developed intelligent life. Some of these civilizations may have developed interstellar travel, a step the Earth is investigating right now, which is interesting. Even at a slow pace of current envisioned interstellar travel, the Milky Way galaxy could be completely traversed in a few million years. So, according by that line of reasoning, the Earth should have already been visited by extraterrestrial aliens, or at least their probes, and... I mean, have you seen any aliens come here? No? Yes? No. I don't know. That's the thing. Talking bullshit. So, you know... Th <laughs> <laughs> so this is the whole paradox. Um, you know, if if there was aliens life out there and a high abundance of them, how come they haven't visited us yet? That's the thing. 
Because these these um, civilizations are apparently millions of years more advanced than we are. Like they obviously would have developed I mean, technology to get over here by now. Yeah, I mean, if you don't think that there are other life forms out there, you're pretty stupid. But I don't think there's any within a reasonable distance to us. Mm. I mean, we look at these Earth-like planets that are two thousand years away, but we can't properly analyze what's on them. You can just see. Mm. the the atmosphere the the water and the land that's all you can see you cannot see um what life could potentially be on there mm. because there might be but we don't know we can't see that because we can't zoom in far enough which is the issue we need to be able to see mm. further yeah we advance our telescopes and I mean, strengthen. I don't know if you've seen the Hubble deep, Ultra Deep Field, but that's about as far as we can see right now, pretty much. Um, How far is that? About 13 billion light years. That's about the age of the universe. Um, that's We can only see, like, the very early galaxies. They're just blobs of gas, basically. Like, they were just irregular-looking mm. blobs. So weird to look at. Isn't it, Earth really, really small? Mm-hmm. Really, it's it's quite small, isn't it? What's small? Earth. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Shall we talk about Voyager One? Voyager One. Yeah, sure. Is that the um the, is... the space probe they launched off in the seventies? Yeah, and it um... went all the way out past. Um, I think it's currently in the the Kuiper Belt. I believe it is. Um. Yeah, it's 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 going towards Neptune. Oh, wait, it's... No, I thought it went past Pluto. It did? Yeah, yeah. it's way out there. Let me have a look. Um, Voyager 1 extended mission is expected to continue to 2025 when the radiostopic yeah. thermoelectric generators will no it longer supply enough electric power to operate as scientific instruments. Ooh. Um, it, it cost... Um, it cost uh, um, 250 million USD... And Voyager One was launched sixteen days after Voyager Two. It's it's what? It's in the interstellar medium right now, I think. So how far away is it? Um several light years, I believe. It, About one light year. More than that. It it's um eleven point seven billion miles from the Earth. Oh, okay, that's nowhere near a light year. Uh one light year is four trillion miles. <laughs> Oh. Um, it's it's currently going at thirty eight thousand miles per hour. Yeah, but th th this is that's a significant amount of speed, you know. <laughs> um, I don't yeah, know if you've noticed, but fast. like that's several times faster than a bullet. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that, really that is ridiculous. Can you just imagine that zipping around the Earth. Yeah, that it would probably zip around yeah. the Earth several times a second, just about. Yeah. It's it's maximum it's maximum speed. More than um, sixty-two thousand kilometers. You say you say it goes around um, the Earth. It would only go around the Earth twice an hour. Hmm. Because oh. it's thirty-eight thousand miles per hour, and the Earth is about twenty thousand miles. Oh, I thought it was thirty-six thousand miles per second. My bad. Miles per hour. It's not. It's fast, but it's not that fast. Hmm. Well, you got to keep in mind the limited technology they had back in nineteen seventy-seven. I mean, this is Star Wars years right here. Like, they were like, hey, that man. That's pretty... That's impressive as hell for 77. Yeah, I believe they put, like, a cassette tape on there or a vinyl record of humans talking and whatnot. You know, they were trying to reach out yeah. to alien civilizations out there, basically. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting seeing all this stuff. It's only it's yeah. it, we've only just scratched the surface when it comes to um space and whatnot. We've got a lot to learn, but we've learnt a lot. We've got a lot to do. Um, a lot of episodes to do actually. Oh yeah, we we've only just got the um the scratch the surface with this podcast. We're gonna go really deep in the next episode. We're gonna be talking about galaxies and stars. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, oh yes. And on the third episode, <laughs> we will be episode. talking about. My favorite subject, black holes, neutron stars, all that fun stuff. I cannot wait for that. That should be really fun. Um, 
Yeah. I could probably talk for a good two hours about that shit. I know a lot about that. It's my specialty. That's what I studied in college the most. So, with astrophysics, mm -hmm. so, you know. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this. Um, yeah. Yeah. What else have I got to say, really? I guess we're pretty much done with episode one. Uh, thanks so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Take care.